start welcoming. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are just going to let uh, people get settled into the virtual presentation before we begin. So it'll just be a couple more minutes. Thanks for holding tight. For those of you who are just joining us, thank you so much for coming. We're just letting people get uh, settled into the virtual presentation. We should begin shortly. Thank you. We should be able to get started shortly. So just uh, appreciate your patience as we just load everybody in. I think it's safe to start now. Okay, awesome. The Durham District School Board acknowledges that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships, both historic and modern, with the territories upon which our school board and schools are located. Today, this area is home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. We acknowledge that the Durham region forms a part of the traditional and treaty territories of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, the Mississauga peoples, and the treaty territory of the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation. It is on these ancestral and treaty lands that we teach, learn, and live. Thank you everybody for coming tonight. We're very excited to have you and we're very excited to welcome your students uh, to DDSB at Home Secondary beginning in Quad 3. Uh, my name is Sarah Forbes. I'm the Grade 12 Counselor and the Department Head of Guidance at DDSB at Home. Uh, we are an amazing community and I'm so excited to share with you some of the things that uh, you can come to expect when your student joins us with, uh, with our community here in, in February. So uh, it, it was part of this presentation. It's a new presentation format for everybody. Uh, there will be a moderated question and answer that you can um, post to. Uh, we do have our counselors working behind the scenes to answer some of those questions. If you do go on that Q&A, you'll be able to see questions that have already been asked as well. And you can, if you see a question that you would like answered as well, you can use that thumbs up sign. Uh, you can click the thumbs up to kind of upvote that to make sure that we know that that's a question that you want answered. Uh, hopefully we cover lots of your questions in this presentation, but again, we're always here to support um, and we have lots of supports at DDSB at Home Secondary um, to address any of the concerns you have. So uh, with, as part of today, you are going to get to meet our principals, our vice principals, our inclusive student services P, um, staff, as well as uh, you'll get to know some of the guidance counselors, the other uh, tech coaches, lots of things, and you'll even actually get to hear from some students, which is great. Uh, we will go over the daily schedule and attendance expectations, and we'll address some questions that we've had about how that differs from your homeschool. We'll talk about the importance of staying connected in the virtual environment and how you as parents and as students can, can stay connected in, in the loop with the school. There are tons of supports, as I've mentioned, at DDSB at Home, and we're excited to share those with you and answer any questions you may have. And finally, we'll give you an update regarding your student's timetable and scheduling updates, uh, including about course selections and how to go about making course changes. At the very end, I will stop sharing my screen and uh, I will uh, go back to that Q&A opportunity and we'll revisit some of those questions that the uh, counselors were not able to answer for you. Um, and uh, if, we, if we have any that haven't been addressed, we can certainly look to them there. At DDSB at Home, we are the largest uh, school right now in the board. There are 4,469 students set to learn with us in, starting in quadmaster three. Of that total, three, uh, 1,365 are incoming students for our, from our home schools. 
we have courses in all pathways um, and we have purposeful courses and, and we can do purposeful pathway planning with all of our students. Uh, and we'll get into more of that later. The biggest difference between DDSB at home and our home schools is that we're so large that we have been divided into two campuses beginning in quad three. We have two principals, uh, Miss Allison Van Bainham, who is our principal for grades nine and 10, and Peggy Perkins, our principal for grades 11 and 12. And then within that structure, we have our vice principals, guidance counselors, and certs available within those junior and senior campuses. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Allison Van Painham, the junior campus principal. She'd like to welcome you and provide you a little bit of updates regarding the, uh, the grade, sorry, the junior campus. Thank you, Sarah. Good You're evening, welcome. everyone, and welcome to DDSB at Home Secondary. My name is Allison Van Bainham, and I am the principal for the junior campus, that's the grade nines and tens, for DDSB at Home. Um, Sarah has already said that it is uh, the largest uh, high school in Durham right now, and we have about half of you uh, will be the grade nines and tens with me. Um, it's a pretty big number. It's, a, it's around 2,000 uh, students that are just grade nines and tens. Um, I won't say a lot about that, but I know that we have families uh, here tonight who are already with us, as well as some that are new and will be joining us for quads three and four. So if you're already a student with us, um, I hope that you are already enjoying the virtual space and the ways in which we are able to support you in your success this year. And if you are one of the families who will be joining us in Quadmaster three and four, we are very excited to, to have you join us. And, and we wanna let you know that uh, all the things are in place um, as in a regular school to support your students and uh, your learning. And um, we are, we're gonna explain more uh, about that tonight for you. And uh, I would at this point like to introduce um, the junior team so on the junior team for grade nine students, we have uh, Basil Brumariotis and Shondell Paris. I'll let them introduce themselves. Good evening, everybody. This is Mr. B. Everybody calls me Mr. B, but if you've uh, got a bit of experience and you will call me Mr. Brumariotis, that's fine too. I am happy to serve this community. Uh, a lot of the work that we do is in the background, uh, but we are omnipresent in the virtual realm and ready to assist students with their needs. I'll uh, hand it off to Ms. Paris. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Shondell Paris. I am joining and really excited to be joining uh, DDSB at home uh, and continuing to do what I do and have done in the um, in-person and taking that to the virtual world. Thanks, Shondell. And for our grade 10 class, uh, grade 10 classes, grade 10 campus, we have uh, Maureen Verhoog. Um, go ahead, Maureen. Hi, welcome everybody. Um, thank you, Allison. I'm Maureen Verhoog. I am one of the grade 10 vice principals um, for quads three and four, I'll be taking care of, of you and supporting your needs if you have the uh, letters A to K in your last name in the beginning. Um, I have been part of the virtual school from the ground up and I'm really excited to see what quad three and four brings. Um, looking forward to seeing and hearing about all your successes and uh, I'm here to support you. Thank you. And Mr. Baraclaw. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Mr. Baraclaw. I am another Mr. B, so we might have to thumb more over that one. However, the other Mr. B was at virtual school before I am, so I will defer to him and I will be known as Mr. Baraclaw. I will be serving the grade 10 students and their families, and I'm looking really forward to working with each of you and working with my colleagues for, for the grade 10 letters L to Z. Thank you, Mr. B, Mr. Baraclaw. And now I'd like to uh, pass it on to uh, the principal of the senior campus, Peggy Perkins. Thank you, Allison. I'm Peggy Perkins, principal of the senior campus, grades 11 and 12 with DDSB at Home Secondary. Starting in quad three, we'll be, we will be supporting approximately 2,200 students with over 135 staff. 
As with the junior campus, we will provide full supports and guidance, inclusive student services and student success. Our amazing team of virtual educators have shared a few very important tips for success as your student joins our virtual learning environment. Communication and engagement are the key tools to success. To students, connect with your teacher and classmates every day, ask questions. To parents and guardians, have your student take you for a virtual tour of their online classroom. It could be a Google Classroom or D2L. Have your student share their online school calendar with you. Support them in managing their time and deadlines. And to all students, parents, and guardians, continue to communicate with us. Follow us on Twitter, check out our website for school information and updates. We will be launching a new office platform in Quadmaster 3, where your student will log into a central office site. From this one location, they will be able to access an online morning announcement podcast, important information regarding clubs and student leadership opportunities, and link directly to their classrooms. Our staff is dedicated to providing a robust, supportive virtual high school for all students in both campuses, junior and senior. We may not have a physical building to visit, but we have a full office staff available to answer your emails and phone calls and connect with you and the supports that you need. At this time, I'd like to introduce the grade 11 administrators, Mark Lynch. Good evening, everybody. I trust that you and your families are doing well in this time of the pandemic. Uh, I am the grade 11 vice principal for A to K. And my main role here at the school is to supervise uh, all the technology aspects uh, that are ongoing uh, throughout the year. Uh, we've made some great changes and, and discovered a lot of things through building this virtual school. Uh, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. So if you need anything, feel free to contact me anytime. Thank you, Mark. Cheryl Rock. Good evening, everyone. I am so excited to be a part of the DDS, DDSB at home experience, as I'm going to call it. I am really looking forward to working with all of you. And my alpha is students L through Z. I'm very passionate about equitable outcomes and supporting student success and really looking forward to ways that I can enhance your experience as you journey and to connect your potential with your future pathways. And so welcome. This is my first time as well. Looking forward to getting to know a lot of you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon and Mark, and our grade 12 team to the event. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope that uh, we're not overwhelming you with all of this information because um, we are just here to help um, at this point, I am the vice principal of the grade 12 campus looking after uh, Alpha A to K. Um, and being here from the beginning, we have really evolved into an amazing virtual school that uh, is serving students. And I have the privilege of working with graduating uh, students. And what an amazing experience to be um, for the first time ever looking at students, you know, finishing their high school diploma in a virtual setting. So students and staff are working really hard to create a situation that uh, is unique and, and both unique and successful. So if you have any questions, we're here to help. We have great guidance, great special ed department. Um, I'm work, I've been working with all of them and the programs are here to help support and see success. So thank you so much for, for joining us tonight and I'll pass it over to Mr. Page who's helping out with the second half of our campus. Uh, thanks Mr. Doyne. Uh, my name is Jack Page. I look after students in grade 12 from L to Z. Uh, I'm new to the uh, virtual school this semester as well and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, a new challenge. It's very very exciting for me personally. Uh, I think this is where education is going, uh, in addition to traditional uh, methods, but uh, this has certainly emerged due to the situations that we've been living through. And I look forward to uh, helping your child uh, 
get on to graduate and move on with life. So uh, there's a lot of people here to assist with that. And we're certainly here to help out in that way too. So all the best and have a successful semester. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jack. Allison and I are very proud uh, of our administrative teams and we look forward to supporting your students through quadmasters three and four. I'd like to pass the presentation back to Sarah Forbes, our head of guidance. Uh, thank you so much, principals Van Bainham and Perkins. That was great uh, that you got to introduce uh, the administrative team. We're so lucky to have all of you here supporting us. Um, I come from a school that I'd been at for a really long time and it really did feel like home. And I'm really, really pleased that DDSB at home secondary feels like home to me now as well. Um, part of the reason for that is because the students have taken such um, care and uh, have gone out of their way to make this their home. And there's lots of opportunities for students to have a voice at DDSB at home secondary. We have um, opportunities for just about everyone. We are a safe and welcoming environment and there's a space for everybody here at DDSB at home. Our uh, student leadership committee um, asked if they could put together a video welcoming uh, you to DDSB at home. And it's also just a reminder for those of you that are current students at DDSB at home that there are opportunities for you. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna hear from Kayla and Emrita and uh, I will play this video for you. and I'm a student senator for the DDSP at home students. And my name is Amrita and I'm also a student senator for the DDSP at home students. Welcome to the DDSP at home campus. In this video, we'll be sharing resources and tips on how you can be successful while learning online. I really like about DDSB at home is how creative our learning can get. Our teachers get really creative with their lessons by having interactive lessons, quizzes, and games. It definitely makes our learning better. Something else we really love is how many resources that are available, not only for student academics, but also for mental health. We'll be getting into these a little later in the video. space for your online classes is super important. Here are some things you can do to make sure that you have the ultimate workspace. Pick a place that is quiet and doesn't have lots of distractions. Try to sit at a table rather than staying in bed. Keep your space tidy and put your phone away. Tip number two is to get involved. Make the most of your online learning experience by joining some of our virtual clubs. We have something that cares towards almost everyone. For example, some of our clubs include Virtual Informed Black Educate Students, also known as Vibes, GSA, STEM Club, Fashion Club, Book Club, Fitness Club, Young Philosophers Club, and so much more. So if you're interested in any of those, go to your grade level Google Classroom. Click, you can join clubs, and then you can find meeting times and updates all from there. If you find at any time you need help either academically or with your mental health, help is only a click away. Every guidance counselor hosts open office hours on Google Meet during lunch. Grade 12s is usually Thursday, grade 11s on Wednesday, grade 10s on Tuesday, and grade 9s on Monday. You can make appointments yourself and figure out what time works best for you. Lastly, we also have Mindfulness Mondays where you can go to do guided meditation or yoga. We have different resources and campuses for each grade level. Every grade has their own vice principal, guidance counselor, special education resource teacher, and Google Classroom, where your student will receive updates, announcements, and any type of message that is specifically related to their grade. By following these tips, you will not only learn new skills, but make friends and excel in all of your classes. Good luck! Thank you so much to Kayla, Emrita, the teacher advisors, and the student leadership committee. Um, these these uh, opportunities for student engagement, uh, most of them have come through students uh, asking 
you know, how can they get involved and they have these interests and we can help support that as well. So um, thank you again to those student leaders. We really appreciate your voice. One of the things that they mentioned was the importance of staying connected and in the loop, um, both families and the students themselves have many opportunities to uh, make sure that they know what's going on at the school. Uh, there is a Twitter account that uh, Mr. Lynch uh, uh, organizes, and there's important information that's tweeted out on there. You should, if you have Twitter, uh, start following that account, and then they'll uh, send you any information that uh, comes available. The other option is the secondary at home.ddsb.ca website. There's a wealth of resources on that website, including uh, mental health supports across Durham region. The DDSB main page has uh, supports as well about programming, important updates about course selection, as well as the DDSB parent portal. There is information on that main DDSB website. If you are not already on the parent portal, please visit that site uh, to get uh, registered to make sure that you are in the loop. Um, the other thing I did want to mention before I go on is Ms. Perkins did uh, let you know this as well. Every day uh, we have VMAs, the virtual uh, announcements, and uh, the, it's a great way to stay informed as well. So they are posted and the previous day's um, announcements are there as well. So you can always listen to those with your student um, at various times throughout the day. The grade level campuses or the classrooms are available uh, via the student accounts. And we do recommend that all students join their grade level classroom. Because Google Classrooms can only hold up to 1,000 students, and there's more than 1,000 students in each cohort right now, we have created a spillover classroom for each grade level that is exactly the same as the original classroom. Uh, all the uh, information will be posted to both campus uh, uh, sites. If you have not already registered, please do so. And this is for new students um, and current students who are not currently on the classroom. The grade level campuses are, are, are on this, uh, this slide right here. We will post those again to the, uh, we'll send this out in an, in, as a follow-up as well. The supports uh, for secondary students uh, in terms of tech supports are great at DDSB at home. We have uh, two tech support teachers, Mr. Agambar and Mr. Hanna, that are, are assigned to our school to help with uh, teachers with support for tech and also for our students. They also have the ability to reach out to Mr. Schultz, the DDSB technology coach, if they have any questions or if there's a, a need for further support. Students who are needing tech support uh, through the virtual setting will connect with their classroom teacher first to address any kind of issue, including Chromebook repairs, damage to cords or devices. That teacher will support or connect the student with the tech team for additional support, or they will make a help ticket through the board portal if that's what's required. And they will be the ones to follow up on those tech supports. The technology section on the main page is really, really helpful. There are helpful tips, but there's also um, a link to all this information about where to go for support. But the classroom teacher is the first point of contact. I am going to turn it over to Lisa McGregor, the Department Head of Inclusive Student Services, and she's going to introduce you to the CERT team and also go over how students with IEPs and uh, inclusive student service needs can get support at DDSB at home. Ms. McGregor? Welcome. I am so happy to be able to talk to you guys about some of the things that we're providing in our inclusive student services department. We have an amazing team uh, that has really kind of changed and moved and become incredibly flexible to make sure that we're meeting the needs of all our students who are working with an IEP. So we're here to help with your academic support, social needs, emotional needs, um, while making sure that all accommodations within your IEP are being followed exactly the same way or um, modified just for virtual um, as it would be in the brick and mortar, in the brick and mortar or in your home school. So rest assured that all accommodations within the IEP will still be followed. Um, while in virtual, there are a couple of things that you do need to, or your students uh, will be able to access in order to get some additional support. We have an academic resource hub. So we have a junior hub and a senior hub. So it's a, a junior hub supports students in the grade 9, 10 campus and our senior hub supports students uh, within the grade 11, 12 campus. Every classroom within our DDSB is provided with the link in order to access those hubs. So you can, while in your classroom, 
You can go in and sign up to come to the resource. You can ask your teacher to sign you up, but the accessibility is there and you can easily get to us. We do have individualized student support. And this is the support that offers one-on-one -on -one support with an EA throughout the day, um, oftentimes with a number of check-ins and individualized help depending on what's needed. We have organizational and time management coaching available. So if your students may be struggling with all the links and all the different places that they need to go, we can put that all together in one space for, you, for them so that they're able to access it easily and effectively as best needed for their personal needs. We also offer before school extra help, and this is between 9 and 10 a.m. in the morning. Students can come in to work one-on-one -on -one with an EA on any subject matter. Our test writing support. Um, many of our students will access us for test writing. We offer a quiet space or a separate breakout room that is supervised. In addition to that, we offer test writing strategies and things to help with anxiety during testing and also chunking the test or assessment if needed. Our self-regulation and wellness keep up. And I call it a keep up because we wanna make sure this is something that's ongoing. We want our students to be always thinking of this and ourselves as well. We have what's called a Zen Den and our Zen Den is a virtual calming space. So it's somewhere that your students can access this is available in every classroom. Um, your students can access to do an activity that helps with wellness or self-regulation. Uh, they can put a timer on to do it for five minutes, 10 minutes, um, or just to kind of take a minute to calm down or if they're feeling frustrated to access something that brings them a little bit of wellness. Um, we do also have self-advocacy support. Self-advocacy is incredibly important and we encourage our students, especially within the virtual space, to be able to speak to the things that they need and the accommodations that are best suited for them. So we are able, our EAs and our certs, we are able to advocate on behalf of our students, um, but we are also teaching them skills to help them to advocate for themselves as well. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one conferencing that's by appointment with the CERCs and throughout the day we can connect with your child or you in that capacity. In our grade 9-10 campus we have civics and career support. We recognize that many of our students because of the short time frame with civics and careers uh, it's important that they get some additional help because the course moves so quickly. So we provide an additional support to help those students. Also we do the same for tech. We have what's called a lunch hour help. And a lunch hour help is really, it's, it can be academic, like a lunch and learn, um, but it's also meant to help students just to connect with other people, somewhere to go and have lunch, work on assignment, play a game, really kind of a space that they can just uh, meet some other people in a social setting. So those are some of the things we are offering um, within our inclusive student services. Again, this is always building and growing. And if there's something else that's out there, we are always trying to incorporate that for our students to make sure that we are meeting as many of their needs as possible. Now, speaking of their needs, our staff that helps, that works with all of our students um, is growing as well. So we have some new people, um, but who, are, who will be with us during quad three and quad four. Currently, we have our grade nine cert at La Roque, and he will be, he's responsible for our alpha A to K. We have Rachel Burrow, who's our grade 10 cert, and she's also responsible for Alpha A to K. We have Andrea Countryman, who will do Alpha L to Z, and Andrea Garris for our grade nine campus, who will do our L to Z. Um, in our grade 11, 12 campus, sorry, we have our grade 11 cert, Melissa Boyd, um, who will do our A to K Alpha, and we have Christine Williams, who will do our L to Z. And in the grade 12 campus, myself, Lisa McGregor, I'll be working with the A to K students in our Alpha, and Erin Eliomis will work with our uh, L to Z students. Now, in order for your students to access us, again, as I said, we're available in every classroom. The link is provided anytime students are able to go in and click that link. They can do it themselves. They can ask their teacher to do it. We are also have our links in the grade level hub. And as mentioned earlier um, by our principals, in our main uh, classroom or main D2L classroom, we will also have the link provided there. So your students are able to access that and easily be able to get us. 
Uh, in addition to that, we will also send out invites. If students want to come and join us, uh, they are welcome to do so at any time. Um, and we will also reach out frequently to kind of update and find out what the student might be needing um, and how we can be of assistance. So we are super excited to have you join us um, for quad three and four, and we can't wait to work with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. McGregor. We really appreciate that information. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the supports for DDSB at home secondary in terms of the guidance department. Um, as I mentioned in a little bit uh, later on, we will get into timetabling and scheduling, but first I wanted to talk to you about some of the sports that are available. So as um, Ms. Perkins and Ms. Van Bena mentioned, we are also split into uh, junior and senior level campuses, uh, a grade 9 and 10 campus and a grade 11 and 12 campus, but we all work together um, to make sure all of our students are supported in the best way possible. We are, unable, we are able to be a connection to community resources. So for families and for students, if you are needing support in a certain area, please reach out to us and we would be happy to support as much as we can or connect you to somebody in the community that would be of assistance. We are really happy to do pathway planning and post-secondary research support for our current students. The application for universities has closed for the year, although some universities are starting to send information that there might still be seats available. Um, so for students coming into us that have already applied, we will be supporting their applications. College applications are due on February 1st. And again, as that application process goes through, we will be the ones supporting with uh, transfer of marks and um, graduation requirements and things like that. So we're really uh, happy to do that for our students. Um, the video mentioned that we do have office hour drop-ins and uh, with the additional supports that we're getting in, in quads three and four, we're excited to be able to offer more of those uh, drop-ins. We find them very, very um, beneficial. The students, uh, the feedback from students has been really good. So now instead of having one day per week per grade, we're able to offer um, twice a week per grade. So um, Mondays and Wednesdays will be our grade nine and 11 um, drop in open office hours and Tuesdays and Thursdays will be for our grade 10s and 12s. And all of those links become live on their Google Classroom, um, the campus homepage, and uh, they can access that link from, from that site. There will always be two counselors on at a time and we'll be able to support and uh, direct. And if we need to make an appointment for a further conversation or a little bit more in depth conversation, we can do so at that time. In terms of well-being and support, we're here to help with that as well. And as I mentioned, we can also connect to community people who can help. The uh, DDSB at Home secondary website, the home, main homepage, also has a lot of resources that are listed there in terms of community access to support. All counselors are available for one-on-one -on -one phone appointments. Um, how you would go about doing that is that uh, we just ask students to email the counselor directly with their name and the best phone number to reach them at and the counselor will email them back with a with an appointment time. For the most part, we're able to meet those times and um, if we aren't able to get hold of a student if the student is no longer able to meet at that time or you know a crisis situation comes up and we have to reschedule we do our best to reschedule as quickly as possible and with the additional staff coming on in quads three and four we're hopeful that we're able to speak to more kids um, quickly um, again a great spot for those kind of quick general questions that maybe don't require a full phone call it are those drop-in meets and we're happy to have you drop in some students just drop in to say hi and again it builds that community feel um, the community hours are still uh, required for graduation for students in grades 9, 10, and 11. There has been no adjustment to the required number of hours per grade 12 students. Um, the minimum number of hours required for graduation this year only is 20. Um, so if you do have questions, we highly suggest you get um, opportunities for volunteer approved by your counselor first before doing them. Um, just to make sure that what you're doing will count towards those hours. If you do have any questions, again, reach out to the grade level counselor. We'd be happy to support. And students are encouraged to send any completed hours to our attention so that we can get them filed and, and entered into your OSR. Uh, we are also going to be the connection to homeschool for course selection. 
So course selection for next year, just as it happens every year, will happen in February. It will open on February the 16th through my blueprint and all students will be able to access their homeschools calendars at that time. Um, our DDSB at home uh, counselors will be supporting DDSB at home students with their course selections through their homeschools. And uh, we are available for questions and support as needed for that process. Um, the grade level counselors, we are doubling in size and we're so excited because uh, I like to brag and say that we, we work really well as a team, um, but they're all so great. So um, Melissa Provo and uh, Melissa Nichols will be our grade nine counselors. And they are, again, just like every other um, support, divided A to K to L, and L to Z. Anne-Marie Eigel and Alex Dodu will be our counselors for grade 10. Abby Pearson and Karen Dern are our grade 11 counselors. And myself and Jennifer Younger are our counselors for grade 12. So if your student um, would like to reach one of these counselors, we do ask that um, you, you email again and um, you, you provide your name and your phone number and the counselor will respond with, a, with an appointment time. It's always helpful if you put it in the email what uh, your concern is or what it's regarding so that we can prepare in advance or even maybe send you some resources to help you uh, before we can get a chance to talk. The daily schedule at DDSB at home, um, it looks a lot, it looks very similar to what is uh, happens at the homeschool, except there is no cohorting. Okay, there's no cohorting and you, you will do the same courses every day. It doesn't, it doesn't, there's no, um, there's, there's no difference between, you know, this is in class and this is online and then vice versa. So uh, in a week one situation, blocks one and two would be for your course one. And then that block three is the, uh, again, that synchronous real-time learning um, it, it, with your second class. In that block four, the expectation is that students um, will be, the teachers in block three will direct students to certain hubs, whether it be a learning support hub, whether it be AR, um, they will get that direction from their teacher. Students will go to that block four hub and they are expected to sign in. Um, with all blocks, there is a, an expectation that there's active participation and engagement. So it's beyond just signing in and uh, turning your camera off, but as long as your name shows up. Um, we are looking for that engagement. We're looking for, again, that positive interactive engagement um, and participation in the class. And again, all of those things are synchronous learning. So, um, you know, there is that expectation of attendance and uh, daily kind of communication of any absences uh, that may be occurring. In terms of reporting absences, you can call um, the 1 800, the 1 844 number, or you can go online and report through the school messenger app. That is the same process as the DDSB at home, uh, sorry, the DDSB homeschools. And then again, we also have a week two where that the courses will flip. Okay. In terms of the timetable and scheduling update, it's quite the process. And um, I think it's really cool. We've, um, we've come a long way and uh, we're really eager with the timetables. And we're really happy that we're able to provide students with really solid timetables for quad three and four. Um, we were given student selections based on what they had originally scheduled at their home schools. And the board was able to provide DDSB at home with those selections so that we could build the best timetables possible. There were some conflicts and we're still currently working our way through those conflicts. Grades nine and 10, you were emailed, if you had a conflict in your schedule, meaning we couldn't get you all the courses that you had originally selected from your homeschool, Grade nine and 10 counselors did send a Google form home asking you to rank the available elective options. And they are currently using those, um, that feedback to complete those timetable holes. They've received many back. If you have not received, uh, if, if you have not received that email, it's likely because we could uh, satisfy all of your requests. If you did receive that email, we do encourage you to send that that information back so that counselors can ensure that your timetable is set to go for quadmaster three. In terms of grade 11 and 12 timetables, they're a little bit trickier because of pathway concerns and the abundance of what we call single sections single section courses that maybe aren't offered at DDSB at home. 
Unfortunately, we aren't set up to take uh, to handle most of the, the tech like your auto or your wood shop, but we all we have an abundance of other courses that we can look to that students can engage in. We are also not able to offer co op so some students who had originally selected co op at their homeschools, they may have a conflict that time that counselors are working to address. What we have to do in order to make sure that um, everybody gets an equitable shot at um, a complete and relevant timetable is that counselors are doing their best to look at your status sheets to see what makes sense. Um, we know that we um, can't always judge by what's on a paper. So um, what, we, uh, what we want to assure everybody is that there will be an opportunity for elective timetable change requests. On January 28th, the timetables and the updated schedules will be distributed via the parent portal. So if you're not already on the parent portal, please go to the ddsb.ca website, get the instructions on how to download that so that you and your student can make sure that everything uh, is the way that you want. And if it's not, we can maybe do something about that. Um, what will happen is that on January 29th, we wanted everybody to have a chance to see their timetables first. You will notice that that 28th release of the timetables is about a week later than some homeschools. That's because of the massive influx of students. And we want to make sure that we are able to start quad three really strong. So we don't want to give you timetables that aren't complete. We want to make sure we get this right and we're committed to doing so. That Google form to request a timetable change will be available on every Google Classroom on January 29th. And all current students, including those that have been transferred to us, will have access to that on that date. We highly recommend our incoming students register and get logged on to the Google Classroom, uh, the grade level Google Classroom before that date so that they can, they can get up to, uh, you know, they can access that form if needed. If they don't, not to worry, we're leaving that form up until the end of day at four o'clock on February 4th. And that will give everybody an equal opportunity to make course requests. The timetable is really, really tight. So we don't have a lot of extra seats. And so that's why we can't take timetable requests over email in order to be equitable for all students and to make sure all pathways are, are valid. We need to make sure that the, the information we get from the Google form we can match it. It's the worst game of Tetris you'd ever want to play. But um, I'm really happy that this is a system that we um, tested out in quad two and it worked. And for the most part, we were able to satisfy a large number of requests. Whereas if we were just doing them one off, to be quite honest with you, I'd have to tell you it wasn't possible. So I appreciate the concern and, and I want you to know that we are working really hard to get you those courses that you need. Um, but again, that's the process. So January 28th, that uh, timetable will be released and the Google form to request any timetable to course changes will be on January 29th. Uh, the course listing for what's available at DDSB at home um, will be available by my blueprint for current students, for incoming students that won't be transferred over just yet. So on that Google form on January 28th, um, our counselors have created a document that lists all the courses that are running in quads three and four for every grade. And that's not just ones with seats, it's ones that are full, it's what it's every course that you can select from so that you can make those educated choices and what makes sense for you. So rest assured, we are, we are in a good spot for timetables and I'm really happy that we can address most student needs. In closing, I just want to thank everybody for their time. We know it's a really busy time of year. People are done with being online. And so to come online tonight, just to hear about coming online some more in the next couple months, I know is overwhelming. So there's been a lot of information here. Um, please reach out if you have any questions. At this point, I am going to stop sharing my screen and just connect to make sure that there were no questions that were left unanswered. I can't see that when I'm presenting. So I'm just going to check in with the Q&A moderators. So if you do just give me a few minutes to, um, to review those, we will also leave uh, this presentation open a little bit uh, just to make sure. But thank you so much for coming. And we really do look forward to having you at DDSB at home secondary school.
Okay, so thank you so much. Um, I'm just opening the Q&A here. So is there a way, uh, in terms of spares, I like to call them study periods because that's what you should be doing with them, but whatever. So if, uh, in terms of spares or study periods, um, the, the spares are scheduled just like they would be at a homeschool. There is no formal Google Classroom. You don't need to sign in. Um, that is intended to support your other learning. I know a lot of you are working right now and have other things at home, other commitments at home. So those spares really can, can support. We do in a quadmaster system have a lot of students who say, well, maybe I don't need that study that I had planned on having. If you would like to re review your timetable and get rid of a spare for something else, again, that would be that Google form um, that you could submit a request to replace your spare. Uh, Mr. Miller, in terms of the information available as a PDF, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm sure we can make that happen uh, to make sure that this presentation is available as a PDF. Um, I see Mr. Um, Lynch said that that could be answered live. So unless I'm wrong, expect it as a PDF. We're good. Um, so the Google form to change the courses, to request a course change, will be available on the grade level campus. So again, um, I'm wondering if one of the counselors, the chat function is closed right now, but I'm wondering if one of the counselors could send uh, an, the just a list of those uh, grade level campuses. If that's not possible, we will find another way to get those out to you. But again, you would access that through that grade level campus. Um, and you can submit the request that way. Truthfully, we are not going to send the email out via email. We did that, uh, the link I mean to the form, we, we won't send that out via email because um, again, full transparency, we did that in September and it didn't work well. Uh, we became inundated with requests um, and the same requests came in several times. And so we wanna make sure we're, we're able to get to your requests really quickly. And I'm very confident with the current system that we can do that. Um, so in terms of having English and French, for example, in quad three, though that's still being worked on. So what you had in the homeschool in that order is definitely not guaranteed here at DDSB at home. Counselors, just like we would in a brick and mortar school, counselors do their best to try and balance, um, but it sometimes does come down to seat availability and making sure that we're able to complete the most puzzles. So, um, I, I, I won't be able to guarantee what's together in each class. In terms of the Google form, we accept requests for, I want to drop this course and add something new. Unfortunately, um, please, please know that we will do our best to um, balance as much as possible, but we can't satisfy requests to change for teacher. We don't let teachers ask for students. And unfortunately we can't change the opposite either. Um, and we also can't change the order for the most part, because again, it's a, it's a really big puzzle that we have to put together. Um, the, I don't know. The, so the, I, I'm, I'm sorry uh, about the automated absence reporting system. If there was ever a concern about uh, an incorrect attendance reporting, please make sure you call, you email the secondary at home at ddsb.ca website and we'll have our attendance secretary look into that. Um, in terms of D2L, that question just went away, but there was a question about D2L. Um, I think Mr. Egenbar might have uh, answered that privately. Mr. Egenbar, can you provide any information about that at this time? He may be busy answering another question. So we might come back to that one. But in terms of the D2L, um, Mr. Agambar and Mr. Hanna are working very hard to get that created. And so rest assured that, you know, um, lots of information and lots of support will be coming to students to support that sh shift to D2L. Um, gym class online, kids are loving it. Um, I was a little skeptical myself. So uh, we have, um, 
the, the phys ed department, that is a team environment. They've worked to combine and really make the most out of their curriculum. There are some online um, workouts that they do together. They also have the health and nutrition component, just like in the homeschool. Um, you know, they, they're not getting together to play basketball, <laughs> but uh, they're, the, definitely the curriculum is still there and the students are still, in, still liking it. The difference with um, in grade nine, there is still female and male phys ed. In grades 10, 11, and 12, all of our phys eds are co-ed. Um, in terms of changing a pathway, uh, in terms from academic to applied, that would be a conversation you could have with your um, grade level counselor. Um, you can make that request as well in the Google form. But again, I would reach out to your grade level counselor to, um, to see about those options. Uh, in terms of, so in terms of the grade 10 student that has a grade 11 course on their timetable, um, we got information from the homeschools and we use that information so uh, to build the timetable. So if it does appear and that's not one that he wants, you can always do um, a, a course request change. That, that's not a problem. We can definitely look at that. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I hate presenting online, so, but thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Um, music programs. Um, in terms of music programs, we do have music programs here. Again, it's based, we run our music programs based on the number of students who selected it. So a lot of our music programs are full or nearing capacity. Um, and again, we did look at what students who were coming to us needed and if we needed an extra class or if we could run one, that's what we looked at. We absolutely have a music program here. Music, arts, um, as I mentioned, the only, well, not the only, but uh, co-op is, is one of the big ones that unfortunately we, we just aren't able to run a DDSB at home safely and effectively um, it, while keeping the integrity of the credit. Um, and then again, some of those tech courses. Uh, oh, all the courses, all the questions went away. Uh, counselors, were there any others that were upvoted that I didn't answer? It seems like all the counselors may have answered all those questions. Instrumental music is available for most grades. It, I just, uh, I don't have the timetable in front of me. So I'd have to double check which grade levels um, still have courses in quads three and four. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will, as the, uh, once, as we're all leaving, I will definitely put the Google Classroom codes up and, um, I'm, I'm going to ask, I don't know if it's possible, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to ask if I, if I make a PDF of that document, I will, um, I will ask Mr. Lynch to tweet that out and also put it, uh, yeah, we'll put it, we'll tweet it out. I just made that call. Look at me go. <laughs> um, in terms of our phone numbers, um, the, those are all listed on the Google Classrooms and we will put that out. Um, truthfully, the best way to reach us originally, uh, like off the bat, is our um, emails. And that way, uh, because there's just at this point, there's four counselors for right now, and there's over 800 per grade. We just sometimes can't answer the phone uh, as quickly as we'd like. And our email, our messages get quite full quickly. Emails, uh, we, that's the best way to get us. And then we'll, we'll call you from that phone. Um, also, we include our phone numbers in the email signature. There is a number for DDSB at home, the main site, and that is again on our website. So you could always call that main site and they can direct you to us as well. Uh, in terms of the presentation, we will create this as a PDF and we'll see if we can put it on our secondary at home website. So that's secondary at home dot ddsb dot ca. That's right. I got that. Okay. Um, course selection. Oh, someone deleted the question about course selection at the homeschool. They're just really quick behind me. I think the question is uh, regarding whether or not you will see the homeschool courses. So again, there's lots behind the, the scenes. That gets a little complicated even for me and I'm part of the plan. So um, just know that you will be in my blueprint, you will be transferred back in my blueprint to see your homeschool selections. You will pick based on those selections. Uh, that opens on February the 16th. So in the virtual world, 
you might be in a class with someone from a different homeschool, it is very possible you'll see different course selections based on what's available at that homeschool. So you'll pick your course selections from your homeschool and they will use that information to build uh, your courses just as they would in any other year. Uh, please, yeah, volunteer hours, please send to the designated counselor. So uh, at this point, you could send it to abigail.pearson at ddsb.ca. Um, but again, we will put a PDF of that contact information. We'll tweet that out, but then we will also put it on the website. Look at me. I just made that call. Uh, will DDS be at home exist next year? Um, at this point, we have not had any uh, formal announcement in terms of what it will look like. We are all hopeful that, and we all know that the board works really hard to meet the needs of the community and what's going on. And uh, we have lots of strong advocates in our admin team to make sure that any information that is available is relayed to the schools. At this point, we are selecting uh, courses through our home schools. So I think that might be the original plan. Um, but uh, even if we're here for a good time, not a long time, it, it's, you are well taken care of. You are well taken care of here. Um, attending grade So uh, in terms of, oh, Mr. Bermeriotis is typing an answer to this. Um, so in terms of whether or not you're transferred automatically, you have to be on the wait list. In, and, and have been approved from that wait list in order to be transferred over. At this point, if you do wish to change your mind either from either end, so coming or going, it does require principal to principal approval. And, and again, in full transparency, um, many requests aren't possible at this time. And the reason for that is again, DDSB at home, but also our brick and mortar schools have taken the new request from students and they've timetabled and staffed uh, accordingly. And so truthfully, there, there just isn't space uh, uh, and there's, no, there's sometimes a, a limitation in space and what they can offer. So um, again, we're really pleased and we're hopeful that this presentation allowed you to see that this is a, this is a great place to be and there's lots going on. So um, in terms of orientation day on the second and third, um, that will be a, so an asynchronous. So that will be um, your teachers We'll be setting up the courses and things like that. Ms. Perkins, are you able to speak to February 2nd or 3rd or Ms. Van Bainham quickly? Sure, hi. Um, the February 3rd, uh, sorry, February 2nd and 3rd, you will be receiving uh, more information regarding this, but those first two days of quad three will be asynchronous. Your students will be provided with links to complete a number of different modules that will be focused on supporting their success in their courses in quads three and four. Uh, so we'll be sending those links and instructions to your students uh, about a week before quadmaster three or a couple of days before quadmaster three starts, we'll start sending that information out to families. Thank you, Ms. Perkins, that's, uh, that's great. And then I'm just uh, looking through the answered questions um, in terms, I, I'm seeing a lot of upvotes regarding how students can connect with teachers and classmates. Um, some students, I've heard, I've heard lots of students, I love hearing about it when they come on to that Google Meet, the grade level Google Meets. And some students have taken it upon themselves to make sort of like, I guess, WhatsApp groups or, or stuff to, to connect. Um, there, are, there are teachers always available to support and the teachers during that real time are there. They sometimes have breakout rooms that they can do small groups. I just highly recommend that they engage in the chat, in the, in the courses, in the, um, in the learning. And again, through that participation, that is where I find students are able to connect. Um, for shy students or for some of those introverted students, um, it, it can be overwhelming to, to do that. But again, even just small steps reaching out and saying hello or good morning, that can, that can, uh, that can help with that engagement right away. Okay. A few of the other ones that have been upvoted. Um, 
are just about individualized timetables. If you do have a question about individualized needs based on health and wellness, please contact your um, your grade level counselor and we can um, absolutely um, assist with that and answer some questions. Okay. Let's see the open ones. Oh, thanks, uh, Mr. Jackson. Yes, so um, actually, so in terms of when your when your when your student selects their courses, they it won't it's not that they will be sent to their homeschool. They will already be logged onto their homeschool system when they select their courses. So they don't have to do it with us and then miss or have that opportunity for kind of like a like you know when you play telephone and the message gets dropped. There's not going to be that opportunity because they will already be connected to their homeschool system and the homeschool themselves will be the ones kind of directing that that ship, but we are supporting the homeschools to do that. Uh, classes will start at 10 a.m. And uh, the daily schedule is posted to the website. I highly recommend that you print that off and maybe put it on the fridge and uh, all the times are there. Oh, that is amazing to hear, Ms. Renz, that the interaction. You know, we've heard some really good stories and, and again, quite truthfully, uh, I'm a person that likes to talk a lot to lots of people and I was a little worried about what that looked like and I've been really proud of our students and our staff um, to really make this feel like home and to make it feel like a community. So I appreciate that feedback, thank you. Um, in terms of the French immersion, again, I highly recommend getting in touch with your grade level counselor. When, when grade level counselors are reviewing status sheets, we are looking at those um, those sort of special requirements for French immersion and gifted. And um, we're making sure we, we timetable as best as we can. For students in grade 12 who require those to graduate, we are um, really trying to support them uh, as they come in to make sure that they've got all that information um, all ticked off. And I think for all, all the cases I know of, we have a plan to make sure that that happens. Um, if there is not, there might not be the specific course that was requested at the homeschool able to be offered at DDSB at home, but hopefully we have another alternate selection that will satisfy the need for that. Okay. And then if for whatever reason, a student perhaps in grade nine or 10 is not able to get the, you know, those elective French immersion credits that they need uh, with us, we will work with the homeschools to make sure that those are, are planned for next year. Okay, it's important to us that that mean, you know, that happens. Um, so volunteer hours, there's lots of opportunities for volunteer hours, both online and in person, well, not so much in person during the lockdown. And uh, I highly recommend uh, they're on the they're listed on the Google website, but www.sparkontario.ca or www dot volunteer durham dot net are two great sources that list online opportunities and uh we you know there's there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities to for students to do that safely and within their own comfort zones um if you're struggling to find opportunities in your grade 12 student who needs those 20 hours please connect with uh, your grade level counselor myself or miss younger and we can um we can make sure we can support and, and find some options for you um, in terms, again, in, in full honesty, uh, as soon as we get information about what near, next year will look like, we will make sure that information gets spread to families. But again, um, it, it, you know, the courses that you pick, it's just like in course selection, we build our timetables based on those, those selections you make. And then if there's a change to that desire and you want a new course, we obviously try and look at availabilities, but it, it depends on spacing and options, right? So we always do recommend our students do some research first and then um, before, they, before they select, just to make sure that in worst case scenario, that they would be happy with that choice. Um, in terms of music in, in quad four, it depends on the grade level that you're in or what you're looking for, but you can always request it if it doesn't appear on your timetable. And in terms of the, the second and the third, um, 
I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they aren't significant. They won't be real time. So there will not be the teacher there. It will be your introductory uh, things, I believe. But at the same time, those are your foundations for the course. And it, again, it is an opportunity to make sure you're comfortable with the material and, and you're set ready to go for that third uh, day. So I would say that it is pretty significant, but again, it's uh, not, it, it's not that real time learning. This meeting will all be available on a, in a PDF. We'll make sure it gets put on a website. Um, in terms of my blueprint, I see that being another um, upvoted question quite a bit. My blueprint is a new service that the DESB at home has subscribed to this year. We used to use Career Cruising. And unfortunately, with the migration of those files, my blueprint isn't 100% accurate for all students. Um, we do recommend that you use that as a guide and as a research tool. And hopefully within the year, it gets updated to be more accurate. But, but again, your report cards are the, the end all be all. Those ones are good. And my blueprint will give you a, it's a good tool to use for planning. Um, I think in terms of the, the question about, I believe the question is, switching from virtual to face-to-face -to -face in quads three and four after the lockdown? I, I think that's the question. Um, anytime, regardless, I, I, I'm not 100% sure I'm, I'm understanding that part of the question, but in terms of transferring a schedule, again, at this point, any change to your learning platform has to be approved by an administrator at our school and an administrator at um, the homeschool and you would start where you're currently registered. So for all DDSB at home students, that approval has to start with Ms. Perkins or Ms. Van Bainham. Okay. And, and again, full disclosure and full transparency, there's not a lot of movements able to happen at this point. If you were to transfer though, your course selections do not necessarily transfer over. We're two separate schools and we're two separate, um, buildings, even though we're a virtual building. Um, so we, they, we do our best to match what you need. We will always make sure that we're, you know, planning purposely with you as much as we can offer you in terms of your career plans. But no, they won't necessarily transfer exactly over. It, 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 you know, it is un unfortunate, but unfortunately with the needs of the pandemic, sometimes we have to think about what's what where our safety and, and what our options are. And unfortunately, we just we we do our best to make those accommodations and make sure everybody's happy. If we can't get those original selections, I'm sure there's something else that we can look that uh, would satisfy the need for that course or the requirement. Okay, and please don't forget to join us on Twitter. Our handle on Twitter is at DDSB at home second, uh, sorry, at home 9212. So that's at DDSB AT HOME, the number 9, TO, and then the number 12. Okay, and I think this will be our last question for tonight. Um, if you are looking for more information on the regular clubs offered to DDSB at home, again, those are all listed on the grade level classroom. So please make sure you're checking that. I always suggest checking that daily just for updated information. Volunteer opportunities that I would recommend. That's one of the questions. Um, in terms of what I would recommend at this point, what you are comfortable with and, um, but as long as they're legitimate and, and fall into those categories, I, I don't recommend one over the other, for example. And again, in terms of the question regarding uh, choosing virtual or on in-school learning, all that information, more information about course selection will come out and be available 
board wide uh, as of February 16th when that uh, that goes live. So I am anticipating more specific detailed answers to whether or not uh, in terms of what options are available to students. And a recording of this web, web it is being um, filmed. I'd have to just check, I'll check the um, with the coordinator here if that is going to be posted, where that will be posted. Mr. Rennie, if you could let me know that in the uh, side panel, that would be great. If you do have more question, our time is running out. Um, please, you know, connect with the counselors and connect um, with those those connected sites. So the DDSB at home nine to 12 Twitter, the website, we will post information there as well. And then again, the grade nine to 12 campus classrooms. Um, in terms of where we will post this, um, I have gotten word that we can post this to our DDSB at home YouTube channel. So we will look to post that there over the next few days. Okay. Um, Oh, I did see one question uploaded quite a bit about Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test that has been um, canceled for this year. And we will post information for when the ministry releases that about what it looks like next year. We, we await ministry direction for that. Okay. Okay, so thank you all again for coming. Again, if you have questions, please continue to reach out. Course selection information seems to be a really, um, you know, an area where there are lots of questions. And again, we will release information as soon as we get it. Um, and I, that will be before February 16th. So thank you so much for coming and uh, be still stay, stay safe and enjoy your learning in quad two. And we look forward to welcoming you in quadmaster three. Thank you. Thanks everybody and thanks to Sarah. No problem. Yes, thank you to Sarah and the entire guidance team. You've done an amazing job tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you team and VPs and uh, guidance and inclusive student services. That was great. Thank you.